Hey guys, there's Softtech here and welcome back. So out of the many questions I get asked on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube is, why does my motor get so hot? Just through normal functioning, some people find their Airsoft Guns motor getting ridiculously hot to the point where they get a little concerned. And so today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about motor heat, excess motor heat, and how to solve that excess motor heat situation. So in order to understand excess motor heat, why it occurs, how to solve it, et cetera, et cetera, we need to go back to the very basics of how an airsoft gun works. So essentially, take your battery, you plug it up to your gun via a connection point, whether it's a, a Dean's or an XT60, it shouldn't be a Tamiya connector at this point, and then that battery connects to that connection point, you know, wiring goes down into your motor, part of it, you know, goes to your trigger setup, and so when you pull the trigger, you complete the circuit, motor rotates, BB goes down range at your opponent. Super basic concept. Now where it gets complicated a little bit is when we talk about motor heat and excess motor heat. All electrical and mechanical systems will produce some degree of heat, especially airsoft guns. Just flat out say that as a fact, AEGs will produce heat in their function just because you have wasted energy, resistance being resistance in the pathway of the electrical current causing some degree of heat production. So a little bit of motor heat isn't necessarily bad. As a matter of fact, all my AEG's motors get at least a little warm, and that's totally fine. That's just how it's gonna be. But when it becomes a problem is when your motor's getting so warm that you're, you're kind of concerned for your hand, you're like, you know, am I getting a first degree burn or am I starting to get one? Or you're starting to smell that really nasty burnt grease, or you're starting to smell that really, really nasty uh, wire kind of melting inside the motor on your armature that's when you have too much motor heat. Your motor is overworked at that point. It's pulling more amps from the battery than the motor's really designed to efficiently pull, therefore damaging your motor, damaging the TPA armature setup, everything in there. And ultimately, you have a very inefficient system that could be functioning more efficiently if you did some electrical rework or mechanical rework, or maybe your motor's just ultimately too weak to actually pull your current setup. So we're going to talk about each of those things individually and how to go about solving excess motor heat down that line. Speaking real quick about amps, a motor is essentially a demand system. It's going to demand how much energy it needs to rotate something. And so in airsoft terms here, if your motor is overworked, it's going to be pulling more amps than what it should, what it should require to rotate that system, given that that motor is not maxed out for said system. And so if you have a motor that's producing a lot of heat, it's pulling a lot of amps. And if you have a gun that has a 20 amp fuse or maybe something ridiculous like a 30 amp fuse, and you pull the trigger and it fires off maybe one or two shots and then the fuse blows, that's because your system is highly inefficient and that motor is requiring more energy than it should to rotate that gun. Now, like I said, talking about amps, real quick backtrack, amps are again the amount of energy your motor requires to rotate your gun. And so if you're requiring an excessive amount of amps, you're ha you have an inefficient system. So one might be asking, you know, what should my amp draw be? Really, your amp draw should be under 20 amps, and that's it's kind of a hard thing to a hard line to draw because every system is different in in accordance to what it, for what it needs to do, and so you'll see highly efficient DSGs that are also very fast and hit, and hit hard, pulling less than 20 amps, pulling 15 amps, 17 amps easily, and you'll have some systems. You know, all, my very efficient builds will pull like 10 or 12 amps very, very efficient setups, barely produce any heat production, stuff like that. So it's kind of a hard line to draw just to say, oh, you should be pulling absolutely less than 20 amps. If you're pulling any more, it's an overwork system. Depends on what you're trying to do with said system. But if you're trying to create an efficient system, something that is competitive or something that is high, you know, high stress, something that's fast, like a high-speed DSG or a high-speed SSG, ultimately you really should keep your amp draw under 20 and that is a really good method, that's a really good benchmark of saying, okay, my gun should not be overheating, my motor should not be getting too hot if my, if my amp draw is under 20. All right, so enough talking about amps, let's talk about some other electrical components here. So, get rid of all of the thin wiring in your gun, besides signal wires for MOSFETs. 
because those are not really drawing a load. They're just kind of a signal wire, hence why it's called a signal wire. But your positive and negative wires, your red and your blacks, those should be minimum 16 gauge wire and quality 16 gauge wire. You can find it on MC MasterCar, you can find it on Hobby King, you can find it all kinds of places. So get some nice wiring, 16 gauge minimum. Some guns you can easily fit 14 gauge. I know my P90, no problem getting 14 gauge wiring in that gun. Now 16 gauge wiring will fit in almost every single M4. You can make it work, do your best. Next thing, please upgrade to a Dean's connector if you have not already, or an XT60 connector. Dean's are pretty much the industry standard for airsoft guns at this point. Well, Tamiya connectors are technically the industry standard because all guns come with them for the most part, just about every gun does. But if you wanna play airsoft and play it seriously and have an efficient setup, please rewire all your guns and all your batteries to Dean's or XT60 connectors. Thank me later, it's a way more efficient connector. Um, next thing, make sure that your motor is actually a high quality motor. So really poorly constructed motors, stuff like that, they're not gonna be efficient, they're, they're gonna have problems. Really cheap Chinese made ACM kind of motors, they're gonna be not as high quality as something like a Tianli or an ASG motor. Those are just built better, therefore they're going to work better, nine times out of 10. Or you can be like me and kind of construct your own motors out of different parts, that works too. Speaking of that, maintain your motors appropriately. Shim the armature, shim the magnets, clean your commutator, make sure you replace your brushes when they need it. Just simple maintenance like that. Grease the uh, armature bearings. Just take good care of your motors. Again, on the topic of motors, if you want to create an even more efficient system, which this is something that I don't do all the time, I've done it in a couple builds because I plan on never opening them up again, is that you can actually solder the wires that go to your motor directly to your motor tabs. And this creates a little bit less resistance. And this allows the energy to transfer from the wires to the motor a little bit more efficiently. It's kind of negligible at the end of the day, but it's something that some people like to do for those extremely high performance builds that they don't plan on opening up a whole lot. Another thing to remember is please run an appropriate battery. This is a myth in Airsoft that some people you know, continue to kind of push is that you this battery is going to blow up your gun, whereas this battery is gonna to be totally fine for your gun. Really, your gun, your motor is going to demand a certain amount of energy and it wants that energy. And if it does not get it, it will work harder to achieve it. And that means that running this battery is going to be worse for your motor on a setup that could handle this battery easily. The motor's gonna be a lot more happy on this battery because this battery can actually supply the energy needed for that motor to turn the gun, where this battery can't. And that means that motor's gonna have to work a lot harder with this battery than with this battery. Now, of course, if you're running like a, you know, G&G Sportline combat machine that was 120 bucks brand new, this battery is probably not a good idea to run on it. You might wanna run this battery. But if you have a, you know, uh, custom built gun that you've worked on yourself, you got the shimming perfect, you got a great MOSFET in there, you have a highly efficient system, run a battery like this, it'll be a lot better for your motor. And believe it or not, it'll get a lot less hot. Um, you know, motors are going to draw what they require. And so plugging up this battery to your gun doesn't mean it's gonna get, you know, a ton more energy and, and destroy it, because again, the motor's only going to pull what it needs. All right, so that's the electrical stuff. Now let's talk about the mechanical stuff. Uh, obviously, make sure your motor is well-maintained. Make sure your armature is shimmed. Make sure your neodymium magnets are shimmed appropriately to you know, be as close to the armature as possible so that it can have an appropriate energy transfer and an efficient energy transfer. Kind of in the electrical category, but a little bit in the mechanical. I just thought I'd mention it. Another thing too, make sure that your motor height is appropriate, your motor angles are appropriate so that that pinion gear touches that bevel gear appropriately and the shimming and the motor height is perfect as well to kind of allow for the most efficient transfer of energy as possible. I have a video on shimming, you should definitely watch it if you haven't already. I don't mean to brag, but it's a really good video on how to shim. And make sure you're not just putting all your attention on bevel to pinion, make sure your spur gear is appropriately shimmed, your sector gear is appropriately shimmed, stuff like that and just go through the gearbox and find resistance in moving parts and make sure that there's as little resistance as possible. Make sure your tappet plate freely moves back and forth. Screw the gearbox shell down and test that. Make sure that it can move back and forth freely and with as little resistance as possible while you know staying on its tracks. 
Same thing with the piston. Make sure the piston is not just super tight on those, you know, upper gearbox or piston rails because a lot of gearboxes come like that. A lot of times you'll throw in an upgrade SHS blue piston and you'll notice that it's just ridiculously tight in that gearbox shell. So remove that tightness, you know, take a Dremel to that piston and kind of shave down a little bit on the rails so that it more freely glides on those piston rails. And then, you know, take that same approach to the piston head and the cylinder. If you have a very dry, inappropriately uh, lubed cylinder compression system, you're going to have heat production there, you're gonna have resistance there, and you're going to have a less efficient system. So make sure everything freely glides and, and creates an appropriate air seal, and you'll have a as efficient mechanical system as possible. You know, kind of going a little further, or going back, backtracking a little bit to the gears, if you want to go further, you can get bearings on your on your gears as opposed to bushings, and bearings will create a little bit more of an efficient system over bushings. But remember, there's a trade-off there. Bearings are a little less uh, weak when compared to bushings, and you have to pay a lot more closely or pay a lot more attention to your shimming. Bearings have a little less leeway with shimming, where bushings you can you can kind of mess up here and there and it'd be a little, a little less precise with your shimming, though regardless, you should make your shimming as perfect as possible. Just remember, bearings more efficient, but you know potential to break more easily. Bushings less efficient, but the chances of breaking are almost never. Now, some people do actually drill some small holes in the bottom of their M4 AEG grip, and then also a couple holes at the top of their grip to allow for like a ventilation type system where air is allowed in and then hot air is pushed out by the motor so as to kind of help some degree of efficiency you know i've always seen that as kind of gimmicky it's never been one of those things that i was like oh i have to do that on a on a high stress build uh, so i've never really seen the the true advantage of it but uh maybe someone else has a comment there that they can drop below that says yes or no it works really well so would like to hear from somebody that has more experience there if after all of this you find that your motor is still getting too hot and it's still pulling what you think are too many amps for the setup, look into the overall mechanical demand on that motor. And so if you're running a you know, stock motor on 13 to 1 gears, M120 spring, 11 one volt LiPo battery, you're probably demanding too much of that motor. And so what you should do is switch out for a 22 TPA neodymium motor or a 16 TPA neodymium motor. Heck. A 14 TPA neodymium motor is going to be significantly more efficient than some stock 28 TPA Ferris motor on that kind of build. So there's a lot of factors here, but make sure that your motor isn't you know, unjustly stressed out uh, due to the mechanical demand or due to the mechanical demand on said motor. Also, another thing you'll notice just by playing airsoft, especially if you play a lot of indoor airsoft and speedsoft, is that your gun gets a lot hotter on semi-auto, repeated, rapid semi-auto, than it does on burst fire or just straight up full auto airsoft. And the reason for this is because semi-auto has a higher peak amp draw than full auto. That's kind of not true actually because they both have the same initial peak amp draw. But what ends up happening is that peak amp draw occurs full auto, semi auto, and then full auto kind of levels out a couple amps lower where a semi auto hits that same peak every time you pull the trigger. So if you have a system that pulls 17 amps every single time you pull, pull the trigger on semi auto every single time, but then you have a full auto system that hits 17 and then glides down to 13 or 14 on full auto, this one's gonna produce less heat than this setup. And so that's something to keep in mind as well. So if you're like me and you do play a lot of indoor airsoft, you can look into very efficient builds, like my TSG build, for example, is a 16 to one TSG build on a 32 TPA motor pulling an M150 spring. This gun produces almost no heat. The amp draw on it is insanely low. And because of that, again, it produces no heat and I can play semi-auto all day as fast as I want without any concern for my motor breaking down. The last thing we'll talk about today is the fuse. Now, I don't like fuses. Fuses are resistance and resistance is awful. And so I get rid of all the fuses in my guns, all of them, and I just build my system to appropriately work. And I've never had a, I won't say never, I so rarely have a catastrophic failure where a fuse would have protected me that I feel like it's, I feel like it's never mattered. 
And so essentially a fuse is a fail safe. And so if you have a 20 amp fuse and suddenly your gun spikes above 20 amps because of some piston tooth wear or you lost your pickup tooth or you're about to lose your pickup tooth and you might take your gears with you, you might take your bearings with you, that and that fuse is going to blow before the motor pulls more energy than it should so that it doesn't destroy your gun. Now, for some people, that works great. For me, I don't really care for that. I don't really have those kind of failures in my guns because, honestly, I put a lot of time into them and I build them right. Um, but occasionally, I do have some sort of failure that may or may not have been avoided by a fuse. But uh, I still feel like in the end, the fuse is kind of a pointless endeavor. I prefer not to have them because I build, my, I build my guns the way I do and they work very well. You might feel differently and that's totally fine. All right guys, that's gonna have to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you don't mind, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Please like the video, it definitely helps uh, get it recognized by the YouTube algorithm and gets me more views and more subscribers. And please comment down below. Talk to me about motor resistance and motor heat and, and electrical resistance as a whole. Tell me what your thoughts are and tell me about ways that you've gone about solving them. And please leave a comment down below if you feel like I've missed anything that is uh, a major point. I don't feel like I have, but I might have. I don't think I have. But comment down below if you think I have. But I'll see you guys in the next video of whatever the heck I'm doing. But until then, stay tuned, Tex.